every day, one by one, I'm gonna try every recipe of Laura, starting from the very beginning. Come, join me on my challenge. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Ruth and welcome to my food challenge where I'm trying Laura in the Kitchen recipes for the very first time in front of the camera together with you. And today, oh my God, the time has finally come. I'm gonna finally try Laura's cinnamon rolls. I knew that I'm gonna try this recipe this week and since the day I planned it, I could not wait for the day to come. And so, as my mom and even my mom's co-worker, you're gonna love us. So if you're as curious and impatient to see how it goes trying this recipe out, how it looks, and most importantly, how it tastes in the very end, then keep on watching. We're gonna need 550 grams of flour, three quarters of a cup of milk, 100 grams of butter, divided into 50 and 50 grams, melted, quarter cup of water, 50 grams of sugar, one package of dry yeast, one egg, 30 grams of butter for greasing the pan, one teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and some vegetable oil for greasing the bowl. For the filling, we're gonna need 150 grams of brown sugar, 70 grams of butter, 50 grams of regular sugar, and a one and a half tablespoon of cinnamon. And for the glaze, we're gonna need 200 grams of powdered sugar, 70 grams of cream cheese, quarter cup of milk, 15 grams of butter, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. the dough and as this will be yeast dough let's start with activating it so to a small bowl I'm gonna add the water which I just warmed in the microwave for like 20 seconds or so you want to be aware not to make the water too hot so just a good rule of thumb is just literally to stick your finger there and if it doesn't burn your finger it's good for the yeast then I'm gonna take one tablespoon of sugar and the yeast and then just let it be here and activate for five minutes And while my yeast is getting activated, I'm gonna start on the wet part of the dough. So to another bowl, I'm gonna add the milk, the 50 grams of butter, the other part is reserved for something else, egg, vanilla extract, and the remaining sugar, and just mix everything together. So if you have something like this, by the way, I took a really large bowl for this, that is the yeast is foaming up and you can definitely smell it that my friend, we're at the right spot. Everything will turn out perfectly because the yeast was activated. So I'm gonna add it to this wet mixture and just quickly mix it in as well. I set this aside for just a second so that I could briefly mix in the salt into the flour. When that's done, I'm gonna take half of the flour and add it to the wet mixture and just mix it in. Then add the rest of the flour and mix it in as well. Once I see no flour, at that point, I'm gonna start my timer for five minutes and need more. I think at some point or another, I will actually switch to these attachments and need for five more minutes so that the dough becomes nice and smooth. Before I touch the dough, I want to prepare a large, large bowl for it to rise in. So I'm gonna grease it with a little bit of vegetable oil and just set aside. Then I'm gonna take the dough and just knead it a little bit longer. It's really, really nice to just touch the dough and knead it. It's so relaxing and I don't know, I just love it. So I'm gonna knead it a little bit longer, form it into a ball and then add it here. I'm gonna grease the top of the dough with some vegetable oil as well so that no crust would form, then cover with some plastic wrap and put some place warm for a couple hours to rise. My dough has 
a couple more minutes left to rise so I thought I'd use this time to make the filling. So I have here brown sugar, regular sugar and the cinnamon which I will mix together and just because this I feel like is too small of a bowl to mix I took just another one I feel like I'm using up every single dish I have in the zone. <laughs> Perfect. And another thing I can do is grease my 23 by 33 centimeters baking pan with some butter. To be precise, because I can see I still have some butter left there. Wow, that's a lot of butter in this recipe. I'm gonna use the 30 grams one for greasing the baking pan. Fun, fun part. I have a little bit of flour here. I cannot stop smiling because this, this is just the prettiest little thing ever. I'm gonna flour my surface lightly, dump the dough onto it, and then flour the top of it as well so that, you know, it doesn't stick. And then what I wanna do is to stretch it out or roll it out if it doesn't work with a rolling pin uh, into a rectangle of a very funny size when I convert from inches to centimeters which is 23 by 38. So 23 will be the guideline of the shorter side of my baking pan and then 38, yep, you've guessed it, I have a ruler here. a little bit smaller than Laura's. I have a feeling she was eyeballing it. Man, could I bet on the preciseness of this rectangle. <laughs> I have a ruler nearby. <laughs> okay, so the next step is you take 70 grams of butter and spread it evenly over the top and then take the cinnamon sugar mixture and sprinkle it on top of that. another fun part. Now we're gonna roll it into a roll. Starting with a long edge, I'm gonna roll it into a tight roll and then once I reach towards the end, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, simple plain water, and I'm gonna wet the edge of it so that I could stick the dough onto itself. Okay, so now, if your ends are a little bit wonky, then what you can do is just cut off the ends if you want your cinnamon rolls to be equal. Uh, I feel like I did a pretty good job at making my rectangle, you know, very rectangular. So I'm pleased with the ends, I'm not gonna touch them. Now, mom, please fast forward this part. I promise I'll be very careful. Maybe I'll even bring some cutting board. <laughs> Now I will cut this into 16 equal parts and the very easy tip how to do that is just aim for the middle. So you cut it in half, then you have two pieces, cut those in half and just continue on until you have 16 equal pieces and then I'll transfer them into my baking dish cut side down. something's wrong. I think Laura used a bigger baking dish because this is for sure 23 by 33 as she said and they look so cramped. Not only they will not have space to grow now but then later in the oven neither. So what I'm thinking, I'll take another baking dish because I don't have a bigger one uh, and I'll just leave maybe nine here and move uh, the other ones here so that they have plenty of room to grow as much as they want. Okay, now this looks better. So now I'm gonna cover these with some plastic wrap and put back to that warm spot, draft-free preferably, 
for another hour to rise. Are you ready for the grand reveal? Let's have a peek. Oh my goodness! Squeaky voice mode coming! Look at this! This was such a good call, dividing them into two baking pans. I mean, I have no idea what size Laura actually uses because mine, look how snug they are here. Oh, perfect. Okay, I already like tried to stick them both in the uh, oven just to see if I could bake them in the same level at the same time and unfortunately that will not happen. So I'm gonna be working with one baking pan at a time. I turned on my oven to preheat to 180 degrees. That's doing that right now. I have the melted butter, which, my god, my mom is watering already. I'm gonna brush on top of the cinnamon rolls. And then once the oven is preheated, I'm gonna put it into the oven for 30 minutes. And while my cinnamon rolls are baking, I'm gonna work on the glaze. So to this bowl, I'm gonna add the powdered sugar, cream cheese, butter, and vanilla extract and just mix everything together. Okay, everything seems pretty much incorporated, so this is the time to add the milk. Oh, one tablespoon at a time just to see whether you need the whole four tablespoons or less will be enough for you. And by the way, I warmed the milk just a little bit, like 20 seconds or so in the microwave so that everything would incorporate nicer. My goodness, my cinnamon rolls, the first batch anyways, is almost done. So I'm gonna prepare this batch as well. Now I just realized that I kind of used up all the butter I had for all of them just on that one, so I just took some extra. I mean, this recipe is by no means, you know, uh, for those who are on diet, so I'm not feeling bad. There will never be too much butter. And the moment has come. These are straight from the oven. The other pan went into the oven. Now, I need to focus and not use all the glaze because this is just half. I already did that with the butter. So these will be so buttery, my god. Okay, so I'm gonna take half of the glaze, pour it all over, even it out if it needs that, and then that's it. I'm digging in. that I've been waiting for this for the whole day, for the whole week, would be still an understatement. I, I cannot. If you had any idea that I could not like this, my friend, you've just lost. I mean, you lost from the beginning of the video, but Mmm, my favorite dessert of all time. In the Canadian, I cannot even talk. This is like heaven. In the Canadian, we call these bandanas. And while I do not have a sweet tooth, I cannot, cannot resist freshly baked bananas or bread or anything of that sort. And this, this little labor of love, my goodness.
I have nothing to say. It's just perfect. It's fluffy, as fluffy as it can be. If you like cinnamon, it's packed with cinnamon. I love cinnamon. It has sugar, it has butter, it has this whatever thing on the top. Everything is perfect. If I don't stop, I will literally finish this and take another one. Want to laugh? I was so serious about this recipe that I did not eat anything and I'm not intending to. This is about dinner time because it does take quite some time to wait for the dough to rise and whatever. This, my friends, is my dinner. I'm not ruining it with any whatever food. This is just perfect. I love it so much. So, needless to say, this is the number one top recipe that I've tried so far on my food challenge. Honestly, this is my favorite recipe. Favorite, favorite, favorite. This is how Laura's look like. Should I just pick up and show you nicely in the tray? It looks so good. How long do I have? Ooh, I can still talk for like 10 minutes. I won't. Don't be scared. I could for the second batch to come. Look at this beautiful sight. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. So that one is Laura's. This one is mine. If you want to check out her video, you can click there. The link is in the cards. If you want, I mean, <clears throat> what am I saying? Check the description box down below for the recipe. There are no excuses because it's both in American and the metric system. So whatever measurements you're using, they're covered. You can try this wonderful, wonderful recipe yourself and just, I don't know, fall in love with the world, with the food, with everything. That's it. I'm quitting. This is, this is like the, mm. I love this. You can see the playlist of similar things if you like such things. There are plenty more ideas for that. And that's it. I have tea ready. I have my mom ready. I have everyone ready to try this. But no, I will be honest. I don't really want to share. This is so good. I'm so bad. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye.